Hello everybody and welcome back to another modern gameplay video and today I wanted to challenge myself as a deck builder and build around a tribe that sees no play in any format whatsoever and that is Sapperlings. And I think I might have seen Sapperling see play once in Popper, can neither confirm nor deny. However, over the past few months in the channel's history, we have been playing lots of different kinds of tribal decks. I mean, over the course of the channel's life, I probably played most viable tribes in the channel, but Sapperlings is probably the one that sees no play out of all of these. There's not really a whole lot that Sapperlings can do. Like people see, you got the two Sapperling Lords, you got the whatever elf in the, the Spore Crown Thalid, and there's really no good Sapperlings to pair with these to make the tribe worth it. Therefore, it's sucky. And then people, nobody likes the spore counter thalids like those things were always too slow but this is what i decided to build it upon it started off as the other like lord effect thalids or the lord effect fungi and it didn't really work out too well so i was looking at these spore counter thalids and i was thinking well they do get counters they may be slowed naturally but they do get counters on them so what way can i exploit these counters there's really not a whole lot, but it's quite simple. Winding Constrictor, the go-to, because this is the one hardened scales effects that doesn't specifically say one one counters. It just says counters. So when you put those spore counters on your Thalids, they're gonna get an additional spore counter. And we even have an additional way to put more spore counters on those Thalids, and that is with a Thalid itself. Sower, wait, what is it called? Sower, sower seed something. A spore sower thalid, I think that's what it's called, at your upkeep. Instead of just putting a counter on itself, it puts it on each thalid you control. Now, looking at all these thalids, they have upkeep effects. So I was thinking, wouldn't it be nice if we had an additional upkeep phase? And that is where Paradox Haze comes in. So we're splashing blue. We could have splashed white because there is more thalid cards in white, but I think it's much more worth it to go blue to try out this Paradox Haze and give us an additional upkeep step because if we have the spore sower and we have two upkeeps, our dudes are gonna get lots of count. They're gonna be able to get a sapling right off the bat right there. And if you have a wine constrictor and pair it with paradox haze as well, it's gonna be nuts. I think the blue splash is definitely worth it. So this deck's not trying to go big as in fat, you know, with the Lord effects, it's more just trying to go extremely wide. And before you say it, yes, I know doubling season would be absolutely mad nuts in this deck. Um, but I just thought it was a little bit too clunky. Let's try not the deck. I did put some birds in there, but you know, uh, I think we got to keep the mana cost low because there is some cool backup win conditions that we'll go over during the deck tech section. So let's get to it. And before we get into it, a huge thanks to all of our supporters over on Patreon for making this channel possible. Their names have been scrolling down below. And if you would like to help monetize this channel so I can keep doing this kind of content, you can find the Patreon link down below in the description. But if you'd like to show your support for free, leaving a like, comment, and subscribe is very much appreciated. And an extra special shout out to The Real Shroom for being our top tier Patreon supporter for the month. And be sure to check out our sponsors, TCG Player and Mana Traders for all of your Magic the Gathering needs. For the best in MTG and MTG accessories, check out TCGplayer.com through our deck list link down below. Anything you purchase through that link really helps out the channel. And if you want to play some Magic Online, consider signing up with Mana Traders in the link down below using the code MarinMoon underscore T3J to save 15% and you can rent and play all the Magic decks you want. It is what I personally use and how I'm going to be filming this video here today. And with that, let's get on to the video. Hope you enjoy. Okay. All right, we're live here on Twitch. Got our deck freshly rented out, courtesy of Mana Traders. This is some Soul Tie Sapperlings, 22 lands total. Karn's Bastion is a singleton land in there to uh, proliferate our board if we have a bunch of Thalids with counters on them. We got Vial, of course, and Birds as our turn one plays to help play our stuff. We have 16, I think, 16 total Thalids that get counters. So we got Thalid itself, Utopia Mycon, Deathspore Thalid, Thalid Shell Dweller, and Spore Sower Thalid. They're all the Thalid counter guys. Um, Thalid Shell Dweller is just a 0-5 wall, does nothing special, it's got Defender. Utopia Mycon can sack Sapperlings to produce mana, and that can be clutch sometimes. And Deathspore Thalid can sack Sapperlings to give creatures minus one, minus one. So it can be pretty clutch to kill little weenie creatures and stuff that are annoying. Winding Constrictor to pump up those counters, as well as Spore Sower to pump up those counters. Uh, Paradox Haze to give us two upkeeps, so we get double triggers on our, on our Fungi to get more uh, spore counters. And then Nyssa, 
Voices in a car, whole playset is our backup wind condition because not only does it also help with the go wide plan that our saplings are trying to do, but it also is a nice backup wind condition with a uh, wind and constrictor because it also is going to double the amount of one one counters her minus ability gives. And so, yeah, onto the sideboard, we got three copies of Plague Engineer for Tribal. We got three copies of Shaper Sanctuary in case the opponent's removal heavy, two copies of Vela Summer because why not? It's the green cryptic command. Uh, three copies of Ashiok against Titan decks, one copy of Unmoored Ego against Combo, and uh, we got a 1-1-1 one, one, one split of Abrupt Decay, Assassin's Trophy, Maelstrom Pulls for some versatility. They're catch-alls, they're our removal. Now, I did want to um, put, like, Nature's Claim or something, or, like, Force of Vigor for Blood Moon, but it was a little bit too late, and I feel like people would think it doesn't really fit in here and totally hardcore judge. So they're not in here. And with that, we are ready to go on to the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. Got a game here against Death's Rock, and we won the die roll. Gonna be on the play here with some Soul Tie Sapperlings. And that looks pretty good. I'm gonna keep it. Always gotta start on the turn one vial, you know? Like, Bird does look appealing here. Gotta admit, but always gotta start on the vial. It's a smart thing to do. Sapperlings is an insane popper deck. Yeah, Pal and Mycoderm is a house. Like, it's really good, but. Um, but Paladin Mycoderm, like, I wanted to splash blue for Paradox Haze. Like, I could have splashed white for Paladin Mycoderm, but I think that the Paradox Haze was a lot more interesting. Um, I think we'll go Widening Constrictor here. Oh, Widening Constrictor is going to screw up my Aether Vial. It's going to screw up my Aether Vial. All right, so change of plans. We're going to go Death Spore Thalid. We'll go Widen Constrictor next turn. That's the problem with running Widen Constrictor with Aether Vial, is that they can screw each other up. So we're going up against Kiki, it looks like, but Pallet, the Polluted Delta says otherwise, I don't know. Get out Utopia Mycon. Uh, get all of our upkeep trigs. Always yield. Always yield. And yes. All right, fetch. A basic forest, play a bird. Play a Thalid Shell Dweller. And attack for one. Your go. Please don't sweep my board with an anger. That's all I'm asking. Not too much to ask. Don't play a second red. Don't fetch that. Don't shock a red source. Okay, thank you. Blood Moon. I guess we already have what we need, so that's fine. I even have the bird to produce colors. Winding Constrictor. Always yield to the Thalid Shell Dweller. No to Vile. Play a Forest. Go to Combat. Swing all. Except these. This, this deck would be interesting with Mayhem Devil, would it? I don't know about that. There's a lot of things that'd be interesting in Sapperlings, but you can't try them all. Gotta try a little bit at a time. Tender Tree Dryad would be cool as well. All right, another Winding Constrictor. Don't mind if I do. Go to combat. Get in there. And pass turn. All right, one more turn and we win. Don't sweep us. Do not sweep us. We're right there. Oh, they ain't doing it. Vile in. Wine Constrictor. 
make a sap. And give me a Nissa. That is not a Nissa, but still. Go to combat. Swing. Is this lethal? Four, five, six, seven, eight. Brings them to one. Not quite lethal, so we're giving them another chance to live here. They're scooping it up. They really just drew nothing. They had a full grip of seven. They just did nothing. All right, I have a feeling that they're going to have lots of sweepers and it's going to be annoying. So I don't think I want Shaper Sanctuary. Like, I know they're going to remove our stuff, but probably not going to be a lot of it. Um, Veil of Summer's not, not bad. Like, they might try to counter something. And... Unmoored Ego? I can, I can Unmoored Ego on Anger or Blood Moon or something. I don't know. Maybe I could do something. Um... What else do I want to try Abrupt Decay or Assassin's Trophy to hit Blood Moon? Probably not. Are they going to have a lot of spot removal? Decay and Trophy to hit the thing? I'm not sure. I need to keep in Vials. I want to keep in Utopia Mycon. I guess we're going to go like that. Cut three Thalids. All right, we'll try like that. They're Breach. Oh, yeah, they might be Breach. They could also be Kiki. But I doubt they're Kiki because their land base didn't look like Kiki to me. All right, that's a turn three Anissa with the Vial and a Veil of Summer. I'm going to keep it. This is a pretty solid hand. As long as they don't Blood Moon out our green sources, this should be good. Engineering Explosives on one. Well, that's annoying. Paradox Haze. Are they not going to blow up our vial? Um, all right, let's just throw out the death spore. I'm not going to hold up Veil of Summer yet. They are going to blow up engineered explosives. They're going to bolt. All right. All right, I'm going to attempt Nissa. Like, I don't care if I can't hold up. I mean, if I draw a land, maybe I'll wait. I did draw a land. Maybe I should hold on on Nissa. Maybe I should wait until I can hold up Veil of Summer. Because Nissa is going to be very valuable. Very, very valuable. It might be worth the wait. Um, yeah, I think, it, I think it's worth the wait. But what if they have, like, Vendillion click and annoying stuff like that and just damage Nyssa? Oh, man. I, I just know they're going to have, like, at least a remand here. Like, they're going to have something. I'm just going to wait. I'm playing Veil of Summer for a reason, and that's to use it, so. Oh, they don't got their fourth land for Cryptic Command. I forgot to... Oh, no, they killed my Death War. All right. Um, do I start taking Vile up to four? I don't think so. I think I'll leave it on two. Most of my things are two drops. Yep, there's one right there. All right, here we go. Nissa. Archimedes Charmant, please. Veil of Summer. Don't you dare have a spell pierce. Yay, it worked. I will not pay three for Mana Leak. Nissa is here. Tick her up.
And I drew my blue for Paradox Haze. Sweet. Engineer explosives on X is zero. I mean, that helps them. But only temporarily. Bring in a death spore salad. I'm not ever going to bring my Nissa into bolt range. I'm just going to keep it above three at all times. Say no to this vial. Make a plant. Attempt to play a spore sower salad. It resolves. That's crazy. Now the last part of my plan, my scheme, is to resolve this paradox haze and go nuts on my upkeep. Double upkeep means we're going to get four spore counters on our guys each turn. And I'm getting so many tokens that Breach Emrakul might not even do much. I'll have a lot of sack fodder. A no to Vile. Another Paradox Haze. Alright, um, well, let's attempt to Paradox Haze ourselves. I should always wait on these things until post-combat. I don't know why I do them right away. Deprive, sure. That does deny their land drop, so I'm okay with that. Um, Go to combat, swing for five. Um, I think I'm going to crack my Nurturing Peat land here. See if I can get something to vial in. Draw a card. Ooh, one more to go. Make a sap. Um, untap. Now, there's been many games I ulted Nissa and still lost. So maybe I just use her for plus one, plus one counters. I think I'm going to use Nissa for counters here because it can give me lethal right now. No, no, because they can crack their engineered explosives, the one that's on zero. So I think what I'm going to do is minus Nissa, force him to crack their engineered explosives, and then I'm going to engine, uh, unmoored ego on anger. Or maybe I unmoored ego on Emrakul. Yeah, I think... Maybe on Through the Breach. Not Lucka. Definitely not Lucka. Ugh, what is it going to be? Breach? Hmm. Yeah, let's 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 force them to crack their explo their explosives here. Do it. What if I unmortigo and cryptic command? Yep, they do it on zero, but I'm still hitting them for seven. All right, unmortigo. Through the breach. We're going to name through the breach. They are. They are breach. They are breach. Yo, <laughs> they scoop it up. Why is this deck working? What the heck? <laughs> they were breach. Good call. Really good call. Yeah, we can beat anger because I got the spore sower. The spore sower is going to allow me two more saplings next turn. Paradox Haze would make it a million more that was going to be awesome wow this should not be working 
Got a game here against Valens Fall. We're going to be on the draw here with some Soul Tie Sapperlings. And that looks slow and clunky, but decent enough. We're going to give it a try. If they Inquisition my Winding Constrictor, then I'm sad. In before 5-0. <laughs> Fallen Empire. Wait, there was Sapperlings and Fallen Empires. So we're going up against the Titans deck. So we're going to have to have our Ashiox in from the sideboard, but we're likely to lose game one. All right, Blooming Marsh go. You know what would be cool in here? I was thinking that, I mean, well, obviously doubling season would be amazing in here, but imagine uh, Time Warp. Time Warp would be pretty good. Give you another turn of like upkeeps uh, alongside your, your uh, Paradox Hazes. Time Warp would be pretty funny. Dried of Lysian Grove, the Nuts. Pona seems to be getting the Nuts. They got two cards left, and one of them is a Summoner's Pact or a Titan, then we're screwed. I get on Winding Constrictor, go. The OG Thalid is from Fallen Empires. But it's just weird because, well, I mean, it makes sense. If you're thinking about an Empire falling, I imagine the castle being abandoned and being overgrowth by fungi. So a Thalid could exist there. Prismatic Women. Crumbling Visage. Vestige. Oh, would you look at that? I knew that was coming. All right, uh, Blooming Marsh. Nyssa. And let's just take it up. Getting all these double spore sowers is going to be amazing if the opponent doesn't have a titan, but I'm assuming their last card is a titan, knowing my luck. Nope, their last card was a Golgari Roth Farm. All right, I'm happy with that. But now they have their Valica online. Ooh, another Winding Constrictor. I'm tempted to go Winding Constrictor, Utopia Micon, and just minus. You know? Is that what I'm going to do here? I think it might be worth it, actually. You know, no, 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 no. Because next turn I can go Spore Sower plus Utopia Micon and then minus again. So yeah, I think I just uh, go with um, a basic Swamp here. I don't think I need to get... You know what? Let's get her green. Go for a Spore, a spore Sower Thalid. And I'm going to minus Nissa here. Go to combat and swing the Winding Constrictor. They're going to chump block with the Arboreal Grazer. Don't find a Scape Shift. Don't find a Titan. Oh, don't get lucky. Oh, they're getting lucky, aren't they? Wow. Wow. What a top deck, dude. What a top deck. I think we lose now. Well, that was close. We were we were about to win, but now we're about to lose. So GG. All right, sideboard time. We definitely need our unmoored ego in our playset of Ashiox. I uh, wouldn't mind an Assassin's Trophy. Um, yeah, we're bringing those. We'll cut one Nissa. We'll cut one Thalid. Cut one Paradox Haze. We'll cut one Aether Vial. You know, let's cut another Aether Vial since we're bringing in so much non creature stuff. All right, I'll keep that hand. It looks pretty decent. We can get off the turn two Ashiok. All right, Pete Land for a bird. I don't really need to get turn two Ashiok off here because they're not really going to do anything to search in the second turn. I mean, they could have Farseek and I could be screwed over, but I want to get these spore counters going. So let's just get out the Thalid and the second bird.
really dumbfounded that Grazer wasn't made to have to put a light into play, just like the Elvish Sky, whatever it's called, and the uh, the Sakura Tribe Scout. There, that those cards already exist, so our Boil Grazer is fine. People were like talking about banning him before. He's so good. Um, all right, nurturing Peatland. Let's get Ashiok out there. Get out Whining Constrictor. Next turn, we're going to have enough to make a sapperling. All right, Dryad is here, but I have an Assassin's Trophy for that, and they will not be able to search because of... Oh, wait, actually, no. Spells and abilities your opponent's control, can, but that's a spell and ability I control, so they will be able to search. I kind of want to Assassin's Trophy their... their their uh, Simic Growth Chamber, actually. All right, let's uh, crack a canopy here, or whatever you call it. Hello. What to do, what to do. Um, hmm. I don't know, dude. Like, what if I wait to see if they play a Titan, and then I can Assassin's Trophy their Titan? If I Assassin's Trophy, they're, they're going to have enough mana. They have five cards in it. They're definitely going to have enough mana. If I Assassin's Trophy, their Simic Growth Chamber, it's not going to matter. Their Dryad is a problem, but they don't have Valica yet. I think I'm going to wait to see if they get a Titan. Let's attack with Whiting Constrictor to see if we can bait them to block, not block, and they do not block. Um, all right, let's play a bird. And then we're just going to hold up Assassin's Trophy, because I know I'm probably going to need it here. Is there any consideration to Ozolith, proliferates energies, and amp up spore counters? I think Ozolith only works with 1-1 one -one counters, right? Or does Ozolith work with counters in general? When I put spore counters, will Ozolith get spore counters and then put those spore counters in something else? Or does it only... Do one one counters. Let me see. Ozolith. I spelled it wrong. Ozolith. If a creature if it had counters, put those counters. Oh yeah, Ozolith does work with spore counters. You know that's a good idea actually. That is a good idea. Ozolith is not bad. I didn't think it worked with anything other than one one counters. Dread presence is here. Um, okay, I think I'm going to, I think I got an Assassin's Trophy, the Dread Presence. I might have just given them the mana for Titan. But no, no, they already have the mana. They got the Heartless Summoning. All right, um, make a sapperling. That should get an overgrown tomb. Come on, give me something good, Dad. Give me something good. Nissa's good. Okay, I think I might just go Nissa and minus and just swing. Yeah, let's do that. I want. I need to put on some aggression. I need to try to close this game. Minus Nissa, go to combat. Swing here, here, here. Do I leave two blockers back to save Nissa? I don't think so. I think I'm just gonna alpha. We just gotta try to close this game. Just alpha it out. They take it down to one. All right, this is their chance. Do they got Valica? They cannot search their library because of Ashiok, so that helps. But do they have like triple Valica? They do not. All right, cool. 
Sideboard turn. We can get this. We just need the Ashiok. Um, Maelstrom Pulse, I think, might be pretty useful. And Abrupt Decay to hit Heartless Summoning, too. So let's bring in those. And let's cut the rest of our vials. Hey, Jackal Shane. Good to see you again. Um... Yeah, that's got two anti-Titan cards right there. Or what if, what if I named Elder Gargaroth because Ashiok already shuts down Titan. Amulet of Vigor. Okay, Maelstrom Pulse helps. They're getting the nuts. I don't like this. Heartless summoning. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. This is spooky because they can get out something. You can get Titan next turn. Yeah, they can get out Titan next turn. This is very spooky. All right, get out Thalid Shell Dweller. How was your week? Uh, same old. My weeks are the same every time. It's a routine. Just like working on YouTube and stuff. Working on YouTube and not working out like I should. <laughs> Very difficult to work out where I live. When the ground is made of concrete, it's you can't really like do workouts on it because you'll hurt your knees and your back. All right, I think I have to um, unmoored Ego for Titan. Do I do that? No, 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 because if they had a Titan, they would have slammed it. If they had a Golos, they would have slammed it. If they had a Gargroth, they would have slammed it. So what do they have? I feel like I might need to get out Ashiok here. I don't know what it is they got. No, man, I just... I feel like I just got to go for... Unmoored Ego on Titan. It's, I feel like it's the safest play. Blue, black, whatever. All right, their, their hands double Teleria West and Golgari Rat Farm. So they're looking for a Dryad. So let's take a look. Let's take a look. Um... Bajuka Bog, Dread Presence, Stradival Seeing Grove, Explore, Ostinate Baloth, Prismatic Omen, Heartless Summoning. So there's no Gargaroth? There's no Elder Gargaroth? All right, so the next thing we have to watch out for is Dread Presence, I guess. And Valakut. So we got to get rid of the Dread of Lysian Groves. Those are the next big problem. So those are dealt with. I have a Maelstrom Pulse ready for those Dryads. I gotta find an Assassin's Trophy for that Valakut. So now I know that I don't really need to worry about getting out Ashiok anymore. So I think I'm just... Because they don't have, like, mana to... Transmute Teleria West. So I'm just going to go double death. Oh, change of plans. We're going to go Whining Constrictor plus Death Blue, Death Spore Thalid. That seems pretty good. A Paradox Haze wouldn't be a bad draw. I would like a Paradox Haze. Paradox Haze and Nissa, lots of good draws here. Forest, all right. Forest, Death Spore. 
And do I go Ashiok or do I just crack nurturing Peatland? I think Ashiok is the safe play. Mm, let's get in there with Wine Constrictor. In the grow chamber. All right, they're one more blue away from being able to transmute Telerio West, but I have Ashiok, so they can't. They won't be able to search. I hope they try though and just get it to fizzle. That'd be sweet. All right, make a sapperling. Untap. Get all these spore counters. Another thalad. All right, let's crack this peatland. See if we can get a Nissa. Oh, I'm one mana short of that. That'd be amazing. That would be amazing. Play another Thalid Shell Dweller. Uh, go to combat. Swing all that we can. Sure. Pass turn. This Spore Sower Thalid plus the Winding Constrictor is going to be absolutely thick. Can't wait to get that online. Hopefully we can get that online before they can find something annoying. Austin, a Bailoff is totally fine. I don't care about that. It does stop me in my tracks, but I do have Maelstrom Pulse. I don't think I'm going to waste my Maelstrom Pulse on that, though, because I can go wide around it. It does hold me back for a bit. I can use death, uh, the Deathbore Thalage to shrink that Bailoff and kill it if it tries to block my stuff. You know, I just might kill it right now. Screw it. Um, so let's make a Sapperling. Make a Sapperling. Make a Sapperling. And use these three new Sapperlings to kill the Bailoff. All right, Bailoff is dead. Play this big boy. I'm really excited to get to my next upkeep and see this happen. It is going to be huge. Like, our dudes are going to get so much spore counters. It's going to be wild. It is going to be wild. All right, they're down to 13. It's turn eight before we're even doing this, though. Like, it feels like this is so slow and it shouldn't work. But we're just getting lucky here that we were able to play Ashiok and Unmorty go away their Titans. Like, I don't think this would happen again. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm, here we go. Here we go. It is time. How many Spore Counters are we getting? Oh, my goodness. Oh, if I only had that Winding Constrictor on time. All right. Green. Black and another Thalid Shell Dweller. All right, let's make some saps. That's a lot of saps. Let's use uh, Death Spore to kill this Arboreal Grazer. Go to combat, swing all. Down to three. If only we had a pallid mycoderm. If only. Yep, they scooping it up. And we actually took down Amulet Titan with Sapperlings. I can't believe it. I can't. I would thought I would never see the day that Sapperling Tribal, the worst of the worst tribes, would take down one of the best of the best archetypes. Wow. I mean, well, there's a first for everything, right? Got a game here against Duder, 6-1-1. We won the die roll. Going to be on the play with some Sapperling Tribal. You know, it's... This is very, very, very risky because I only have a land and a bird. And if the bird dies, we're absolutely screwed. 
But I think the upside's worth it. I have one more land. I got lots of goodies. I'm gonna try it. Top decking a land would be just the best. Like go in Winding Constrictor into Thalid or just turn to or turn to Nissa. Be amazing. Just please don't kill my bird. Like they have a bird as their avatar. Wait, what is this? Sliver Queen. That looks like a bird. Don't oh, okay, cool. We are not beating Tron though, that's the downside, but the upside is it didn't kill our bird. And I didn't get my thing. Um all right, let's get out of Winding Constrictor. Yeah, we're gonna die. What if they're Tron slivers? You never know. Um. Yeah, let's go Vile. Because Winding Constrictor can cheat my Vile up to two. Let's go Thalid. And get in there for one, or for two. Alright, they're getting Tron online. Let's see if they go just Karn Bridge. Golos for Cataracts, and we're gonna die. Because they're gonna get Emrakul off of it. You already know it. Hey, Breffin. Good to see you again. We were just talking about dinos earlier. You missed the cool conversation. Charge Tron. All right, yield. Yield. And that's gonna be a yes. Go for Death Spore Thalid. And pass the turn and we'll just vial in another Constrictor. Just don't hit the most amazing things off of that Cascading Cataracts, please. Ten mana. Got Ulamog. Ballista on five. Ballista on five. Yeah, I'm gonna... I think I'm gonna scoop. I'm gonna scoop. Tron doing Tron things. I think this one's gonna be a hard L. Like, we really don't have much against Tron. Um, I think I'll go Ashiok, because maybe I can turn to it off a of bird and stop them from fetching with map and stuff. It's it's worth a shot. Assassin's Trophy for sure. And then on Mordigo, I'm like Golos, because the Golos for Cataracts is like their main plan. Um, I think... Since I'm bringing in five non-creatures, I think I'll cut Vials. And then cut one Paradox Haze, because it's slow. Alright, please give me Bird into Unmordio. Alright, Bird into Nissa, I'll take that. Let's fetch and shock because we can. There's the map. Come on, give me Ashiok off the top, please. Give me Ashiok. That's not an Ashiok. All right, we'll go Nissa. Start ticking up. Let me guess. You got another Tron land in hand. Turn three Tron as usual. Like, people like whiff on Tron all the time, but against me personally, they hit it every single time. It's apparently people did the math and it's only a 40% chance, but against me, it's a 100% chance. Uh, Paradox Haze is cool. Um, I definitely have to Assassin's Trophy here after they go fetching. So I can't play Paradox Haze, but I can go Thalid. Play Verdant Kitty Combs, and I think I'm going to minus and start getting in there. I have to like threaten them. I fetch here, get a basic force and pass. I should have done that after they fetch, but sure. Let's see what they're getting. 
They're getting a tower. All right, so let's uh, kill their power plant. They're getting the wastes. So they're true colorless. Surge node. All right, surge node's fine. Everflowing chalice for one, I'm guessing. I'm going to put a counter on itself with the surge node. Oh, there's the Ashiok. I think it's a little bit too late for Ashiok, though. You could stop a Golos. Uh, let's take up Nissa, make a plant. Let's Paradox Haze ourselves. I, I just don't think Ashiok's needed anymore now that their expedition map is used. Go to combat. Like, if they Golos here, I'll be sad, but I feel like I just gotta go for aggression now at this point. Like, I have no time to be sitting around waiting. They're taking up their Chalice. They got five mana. There's the Cataracts. Quick, quick question for anyone who wants to share their opinion. Why do you believe prison decks aren't in the modern meta? At the very least, I would believe Mono Red Prison would be in the meta, but there's nothing. Pirate Prison, Pirate Prison still sees a lot of play. It's more of like a, a community deck. Like it's more of a a deck that people like have their own community around. It's not really a big thing. It's it's out there still, um, but it's just Blood Moon. People can get around Blood Moon in their in, in certain ways, and sometimes it doesn't really affect them much. Some sometimes Bridge doesn't do anything, like. Yeah, it just it has some holes in it. All right, overgrown two. Well, double upkeeps don't really benefit us anymore. Now that our thal is gone. All right, let's go Ashiok. Thalid shell dweller. Minus. Go to combat. Attack for three. All right, I guess you're right. I guess I'll mill them. There's no reason not to. Since they scryed there, I'm definitely milling them second main phase. Because I can screw up their mills if they kept that stuff on top. Let me see. I hit not really anything too good. I hit a Golos, which if that was on top, I'm happy about that. Didn't look like it was, though. Their up keeps crying with their Maze Mind Tomes looking for goodies. I am two turns away from lethal. I'm not getting lethal next turn, but the next turn after that I will. As long as they don't hit anything amazing. Seven mana. That's definitely scary. They're going to charge up their Everflowing Chalice first, and then they're going to use it. Ballista on X is three. All right, that's fine, because all our dudes are pretty fat butt right now. They're going to kill Nyssa. I get double upkeeps from my Thalid Shell Dweller. Boyds. Play a Boyds. Um, I think I'm gonna leave Ashiok how he is at four, because if they want to search, I'm gonna force them to use all their mana to pump up Ballista twice and shoot this. Um let's go to combat and swing with these two threes. This is difficult. 
they got so much good value on board and even they're not super low because they're going to be able to activate those maze mind tomes and crack them to gain four life There's a lot of trouble keeping control working, so to go even harder on control when the threats might not match against it. I don't even know what I'm saying. Okay, Maze Mind Tome again. They have the whole set of Maze Mind Tomes. Wait, they got three of them. They're going to gain so much life off of those tomes. And they can live here too. And now they got Tron online too. Also in a moment's notice, they can use Surge Node to put a counter on those Maze Mind Tomes to gain four life in an emergency situation. In the Astral Cornucopia. What the heck? They scooped it up? Why? I feel like they were going to win that one, honestly. I really think they were going to win that one. But let's try it again. You never know. Uh, they have so much, like, artifacts. I think I'm going to bring in Maelstrom Pulse and Abrupt Decay. And cut two copies of Thalid Shell Dweller, because the Defender's not really worth I mean, that's an Ashiok, but it's way too slow for their map. So I think this is going to be a mulligan. I think we can do better. All right, we'll keep that one. And toss away... I think a Utopia Micon. We're just going to pray that we hit our land drops and just go one, two, three, four, boom, boom, boom. Just get them all in order. We gotta go to drastic measures to beat Tron, so we have to just keep risky hands and hope for the best. But since they're on the play and they got map, let me guess, turn three Tron? Yes, sir. Always, every single time. I really wish Watsy just swallows their pride one day and bans Tron lands. Like, I seriously, legitimately wish they do. Hate on it all you want, but I really wish they do. It's broken. It's like, it's become a staple and a part of modern. It's like part of what modern is now, but I just, I hate it. <laughs> it's just so difficult for certain decks to beat. It's like impossible for some decks to beat. It's like a deck that says, oh, I have a guaranteed win against this. That's, I feel like that's not healthy. And there is definitely... Uh, matches where Tron guarantees a win, like against this, for example, because we're such a dirtily deck. Any deck that dirtles, Tron is gonna beat. Because Tron can do really big, scary things that if you dirtle and give them time to find their Tron and cast their big spells, like you're gonna lose. Expedition map again to find even more Tron lands. Too late for our. Ashiox and such. Well, there's the Ashiok, but it's too late for it. We're just going to go forest, get out Nyssa, and make a plant. Someone clip that one, two, three, four, boom, 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 and make a give it auto tune and make techno beats. That'd be pretty good. There's a, like you can songify basically anything. Remember that old YouTube channel called Songify the News? 
Like you can literally turn any talking into music if you just like pitch it right, clip it right, and put a beat to it. Like it's that easy. They got Mystic Frog going. Everflowing Shalice. Another Surge node. And that's where it ends. All right, we're going to have to find a way to destroy that Mystic Forge off the top right now. Get encounters on our dudes. Uh, let's go with nurturing peatland. Play a spore sower thalid. Um, minus Nissa. And then you know what? I think I'm actually just gonna concede here because they're untapping with Mystic Forge, Surge Node, and Everflowing Chalice. And they got Tron online, and they're definitely storming off here. Definitely, no doubt, storming off here. Um, so that's going to be game. GG. Got a game here against Lurlalande. We won the die. We're going to be in the play here with some Soul Tie Sapperlings, and that's going to be a keep. That looks pretty good. That's a nice curve. As long as none of it gets Thoughtsies, we go turn to Constrictor into Paradox into Spore Sower, and then having double up cues with this is going to be awesome. But I do need a couple more Thalids, so hopefully we draw those. Thanks, Arav. Invasive surgery. I mean, that would take their uh, their their maelstrom pulses, but yeah, I don't think invasive surgery is really that good of a card. I think it has its place. I think there's some times and places where invasive surgery could see play. Encroaching wastes. I, I really like Encroaching Waste. I think now I think Encroaching Waste is a land that should see more play than Field of Ruin, honestly. I think that like whenever I use Encroaching Waste, it just always does um, something amazing. It's just a strip mine. It's a modern strip mine. Can we not get Thoughtsies, please? I've, I think I've gotten Thoughtsies every single round today. And I, I don't want to get Thoughtsies anymore. It's just... It's just the most tilting card that exists. Everybody's got sticky fingers today. All right, we're going to grab Watery Dave. They took my Winding Constrictor. All right, let's play our Blooming Marsh while it will still enter untapped. Because we might even top deck another one, so I'm going to play it now. Yay, hugs. Will Thwain, Bitter Blossom. All right, at least I like what I see. Model Black Bitter Blossom. Is right up my alley. That's the kind of stuff I would build and have built. Yay! I must hug you back. I must return the favor. Let me just F6 the turn real quick. So if we can dirtle enough, we can get them to die to their own bitter blossom. Thieving Sprite. So it's the... Oh, they're going to take my Spore Sower. Rip. That was going to be so amazing. Mono Black Fairies. That's awesome. So they're going to definitely have Rankle for sure. But yeah, the, like no opponents today can let us keep a hand. Everybody's just thoughts using us left and right. Another Paradox Haze. 
what if I give them Paradox Haze? What if I enchant them so they get double drain triggers off their Bitter Blossom? That'd be interesting, but I think it's smarter to just enchant ourselves just in case. At least I'm getting it, um, a sapling per turn with this, what we got on board right now. But what would make us get two saplings per turn is either a Spore Sower or a, um, a Wine Constrictor. I missed this follow, Sporky, and the Lion King Alpha. I missed these follows. Lots of noms. I've got my own Bitter Blossom going here. I built my own Bitter Blossom. Oh, dude, imagine if I, if I Paradox Haze them. Oh, I, I accidentally clicked through. I didn't mean to click through. I meant to make a Sapperling at the end step. Yo, Wine Constrictor is good. I feel like not making that Sapperling might actually be really crucial. I feel like this game is going to be really close. Looking at the way things are setting up with Bitter Blossoms and such, I feel like that one damage is going to end up mattering. Me missing out on that. This time, let's try not to click through at the end step. I hope I draw Nissa. Nissa would be great. I will take the three. Make a sap. And we're gonna get so much spore counters here. Anissa off the top would be so good. But they might oh they don't have spell slutters, right? They're mono black. Alright. We got six counters on our Utopia Mycon. Deathspore Thalid is awesome. Very, very, very awesome. This is exactly what we wanted. This is perfect. Make a sap, make a sap. Kill off their blocking rogues, their blocking fairies. Because I'm making more saplings than they're generating fairies off their bitter blossom. So now I can go attacking with these, and when they go to attack me, I can sack these saplings off and kill their fairies. Yeah, this is perfect. That's where Thalid is very good in this matchup. Yeah, my upkeep is going to be super sick with this setup. I'm going to get a forest because I don't need blue anymore. Let's kill off some of their dudes. And pass a turn. I'm going to get four saplings per turn here and be able to kill off four fairies. Cavern of Souls. It looks like they're getting a little bit flooded, but to be fair, I got just as much as lands as they do. And they also thought sees me. All right, Una's black guard is going to be annoying. I got to kill that immediately. And let's make a million sapperlings. Three different upkeeps. All right, play a bird. Makes four saplings. I'm surprised I haven't played a rankle yet. All right, let's kill off their black guard. Kill off everything. Go to combat, attack for three. And then they're going to go down to three from their Bitter Blossom triggers, and then one more turn and they're dead. Man, that Death Spore was the savior. 
I'm happy this card exists. All right, sweet. We're going to sideboard against fairies. We definitely want these three copies of Plague and Giner. Bring in those. Bring in Veil of Summer. Bring in um, all three of these to kill Bitter Blossoms. Um, and we're going to cut Aether Vials because we're bringing in so much non-creature stuff. And we'll cut um, probably the Paradox Hazes. Is Nissa good? Yeah, Paradox Haze, I feel like, is filler that we always cut. This looks good. This looks good is honestly just the Golgari deck, but um, I think the the blue splash for Paradox Haze was kind of a meme. It was kind of just like to try it out because it looks like it would be really awesome in some situations, um, like it was there. But I don't expect it to do that every time because Modern is a very interactive format where people are going to be able to deal with their stuff before we can get it online. All right, let's keep that because of the turn two Plague Engineer. Um, although it's likely to get hand disrupted, but you know, as I always say, if you're going up against Thoughtseize, try not to mulligan that much or else the Thoughtseize is gonna wreck what you have left. Oh, no turn one Thoughtseize. And I'm assuming they're just gonna turn to a Bitter Blossom. All right, let's shock this Overgrown Womb. Go for a Boyd. Yeah, I want to try. I think Ozlith would be amazing here. I'm going to have to shout that out in the, uh, in the intro of the video. All right, Butter Blossom is here. And they're going to be very sad to see my boy Plague and Giner. Very. They're probably going to remove it, though, I would imagine. Like, disfigure or something. That sounds painful. Yeah, it does. Oh no, they have their own Plague Engineer in a way. Dalage Shell Dweller. Alright, Breeding Pool tapped. Dalage Shell Dweller. Bird. Pass a turn. Let's see if they start killing birds or if they keep on shrinking the plague. They shrink the plague so it can't hit Lily. That's good. Every time they shrink the plague, that tells me that they're not going to remove it. They don't have removal. All right, put a counter on Thalid. Shell Dweller. Another one. I will take it. All right. Let's crack a peatland. Did not mean to tap it. Um, crack it. Death spore. Well, that's going to be good. All right. Um, but you know what I'm about to do? Hopefully they don't have like legions in, but that doesn't do anything. All right. So fairy. So the death spore and the Karn's bastion. And the Shallow Dweller going, going to be proliferating every turn, that's going to be good. So Karn's Bastion is basically like your Wine Constrictor or Spore Sower in a land. I am happy that they removed, that they used their Field of the Dead before they, or Field of Ruin before they saw my Bastion. Because <laughs> they're going to regret that in a moment. Quick question on the Patreon. I was reading the tier awards and was wondering why one time things were like a deck review, choosing what deck to play. And if possible, give a reward to someone if I'm unable to use it. Um, 
so it is like a one-time thing maybe i should make it a monthly thing like if somebody wants me to look over a deck the, the thing is um it's a one-time thing because it literally takes an entire hour to to do a deck review for somebody like i i sit there i, I analyze a deck and i type out these paragraphs like i, I swear like whole like too much to read and i give them this whole analysis and like oh this is what i think 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 this is what you need to do this is what your deck's doing maybe you do this maybe you do this like i literally just sit there and write like a geography what is it called a bio what a whole entire novel on their on their deck that's why it's it's a lot of work so that's why i make it a one-time thing Ooh. Spore sower. Okay, change the plans. We're going spore sower. All right. Um, let's go to combat. And I think I might have to let um let this play engineer go for their meta vault but it's gonna shrink though if they turn it into a creature it's gonna die because it's a fairy so it'll get minus two minus two as soon as it's activated so we successfully hit liliana she is threatened the opponent's just losing a life the opponent's just bleeding themselves off the bitter blossom is doing nothing that's funny i really hope i get to my upkeep and get to use a spore sower plus karn's bastion it's gonna be thick Really, really massive. And then uh, obviously the the signed card in the mail. That's that's a one time thing too. Because if I if I like every every single month send out a signed card to um, every one of my patrons, I would like my whole collection would dwindle. I would have nothing anymore. Like. I do one day want to do a deck giveaway though. I I do want to give away one of my personal decks one day. Um, that that's something I plan on doing at some point. My decks are currently packed away in a box, and I'm too lazy to move things around and get to them. My number one priority right now is just getting out of this place. Like, I live in a very horrible place, and I'm really just trying to move somewhere better. It's like, once I move and get my own place for my, the first time ever, it's going to start, like, a new chapter in my life. My life will really begin once I get out of here. I've been in this tiny concrete room for seven years. All right. Veil of Summer is great. Utopia Mycon? Oh, what'd they do to my Karns Bastion? Oh, they feel to ruined it? Oh, no, they didn't. What happened to it? They made me discard it? Like, oh, Rankle. Did I have something else to discard? All right, uh, go to combat. Let's kill Liliana. And hit their face. I wasn't paying any attention. I could have chum blocked the wrinkle so I got, got to keep my bastion. Bastion would have been huge there. All right, make a sapperling. Get all the trigs. I feel like they're gonna have a sweeper at some point. Double Veil of Summer. And right, go to combat. Swing here, 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 and here. They're down to three. Three more turns and Bitter Blossom's gonna drain them. 
down to two. It's fair you want to move out after senior year, which you're in right now, but would prefer a roommate and I do need a car, but procrastinating then COVID stop that part. Yeah, I need a car too. That's the scariest part about moving out. That's like the one thing that's stopping me. Oh, cool. We took down mono black fairies. The plague engineers are just so good. Like we played a deck um, the other day that had a sideboard play set of plague engineer. And I honestly agree with it. It's such a good card right now. There's like surprisingly more tribal than you'd think. I definitely highly value plague engineer um, in black sideboards now. Like previously I was thinking, ah, oh, there's better things to run, but no, plague engineer is worth it. I highly recommend running them at least three. Hello everybody and welcome to the speed up session for today's video. As you know, we like to speed up the longest games in the video to make sure it's not way longer than it should be. And as I always say, if you want to catch the full games unsped up, unedited and uncut from the video, you can go to the Twitch link down below in the description and check out the entire VOD there from last Monday. You can also come on a future Monday if you want to catch the gameplay live before it goes up on YouTube. You can see it beforehand. You can also play against me if you so choose to. I welcome it. So. We're speeding up one game today. One single game was the longest game in the video. And this is against somebody with the username Jund. So we already knew what we were going up against. We're going up against Jund, the top tier of the meta at the current moment. It is the most played deck. And uh, yeah, we put up a pretty good fight, but notice their draw. If you were looking at the screen for any amount of time, they got the most removal heavy draw of their entire life. Like. Even through all their removal, we still put up a good fight, but they hit so much removal and they hit quad Liliana in that game. They hit quad Lily. Like, what was I supposed to do? I could not keep a single threat on board. And also, right when my Nissa was about to minus seven, right when I got it up to seven, they top decked a bolt to make it not ult. So that's very unfortunate, but that's the nature of Jund, their Lux sacks. <laughs> so we're going to the next game. And then even on top of them being a Lux sack, top decking all the removal, we had double Shape of Sanctuary. I'm like, yes, this is about to get going. We're about to draw so many cards. And then I was, you know how I always say that nobody plays Maelstrom Pulse anymore? Like it used to be a singleton in Jund and now it's not. Well, they had the singleton and they found it right on time to kill both of our Shape of Sanctuaries before we were able to get value off of them. So that was very unfortunate, but we still ended up taking that game. But game number three, we're on the draw. And of course we get our hand torn apart by hand disruption and get everything removed. But you know, Sapperlings put a really good fight. If the opponent got less of a nuts draw, I feel like we could have taken this one down and taken down top tier in the meadow with the worst tribe ever. But I'm very, very proud of this deck for going positive. That's that's a really big feat for Sapperlings. And with that, we are going to go on to the wrap up of the video. I hope you enjoyed this one. It was kind of just a meme, but I hope you enjoyed it anyways. All right, so we ended up actually positive. I don't know how. I cannot explain how we ended up positive with three wins, but it actually happened. I feel like we won some matchups that we really shouldn't have. And because like the deck, if given the right circumstances, can really just grind out and put the opponent in position where there's not really a lot they can do. It's it's really easy to deal with this deck, I feel. You just deal with the key pieces, like deal with the Wine and Constrictor, and then the U Utopia, or the Thalids or whatever, are really slow, and you can deal with them easier. You deal with the Spore Sower Thalid, and then, like, the deck's really slow. You deal with the Paradox Haze. I mean, given Paradox Haze and Spore Sower Thalid are a lot harder to answer than Wine and Constrictor, but still. It somehow worked out. I don't really know how the deck worked out. I, like I said, I can't explain what what would i change about the deck i really don't know the deck looks pretty solid as is i would say the paradox haze is probably not worth the splash i would say if you're gonna splash something splash white for pallid mycoderm you can even run mycologist in there if you want um but the deck works fine is just golgari it really does and I like how the Nissa works as a backup wind condition for a whining constrictor. All I would say is you probably want a bigger threat density in there. Like the, when you have all these small creatures doing nothing for a while until they get three spore counters, the deck feels kind of weak, I would say. And at that point, if you were to cut Paradox Hazes, and maybe if you were to even cut Aether Vials, to be honest, because like whining constrictor messes with Aether Vial, 
if you were to cut those two play sets of cards, I would say run some removal. Maybe run some hand disruption, you know? Like, maybe run, like, a few Inquisitions and Thoughtseize and maybe, like, Abrupt Decay or Push or Assassin's Trophy, you know? some Something among those lines to, like, hold you off while you let your Thalids charge up, you know? Some kind of way to hold off wouldn't be bad. You know, if you were trying to just go wide and not care about going fat, like, maybe you could even run Ensnaring Bridge. It's a, it's a wacky, weird idea, but in theory, like, if you were to just wait until a point in the game where you can make a trillion sapperlings, you can just hide behind a bridge the whole time because all you need is one card to be able to swing with your sapperlings. So eventually it'll happen. Eventually it'll get to that point. You know, there there's a lot of, like, brewability with sapperlings. Like I said, um, like, doubling season would be nuts if you wanted to go, like, take out Aether Vial and take out Paradox Haze and just go in on just black green midrange and just put a little bit more ramp, maybe Sylvan Caryatids or something, or, like, Arbor Elf Utopia Sprawl and go bigger. You can go doubling season. You can go Tender Shoot Dryad. You can, I don't know, like I said, Time Warp earlier might be interesting, but probably too cute. Um, yeah, the, there's 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 a lot of options. And another thing I didn't see. Let me see. What does Ozolith say? Let me grab Ozolith right here. All right, so here is Ozolith. Ozolith says, whenever a creature you control leaves the battlefield, if it had counters on it, put those counters on the Ozolith. So it doesn't specifically say 1-1 one, one counters. It just says counters. So you can put spore counters on Ozolith, and then at your combat on your turn you can put those counters onto another creature. Um, but, you know, I don't see that working out so well because that's really counting on your spore counter creatures to die. I feel like that's more of a sideboard against control heavy decks, but then at that point we have the Shaper Sanctuaries. I don't know, but it's an interesting option that somebody brought up and I didn't realize that it worked with every kind of counter. But, you know, if you want to try that out, go for it. Um, anyways, before I ramble on about a million things you could try for this deck, um, yeah, I would probably recommend, uh, brewing around with it and trying it out for yourself and trying to make saplings work because it's fun to make under the radar tribes that nobody plays actually do something. So put yourself to the challenge, see if you can do it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did hit that like button down below and make sure to subscribe. If you're new, we upload every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, wacky brews in the modern format. If that's your kind of thing, make sure that notification bell. So you're notified when the videos go up. And if you want to try the deck out for yourself, consider signing up with Mana Traders in the link down below using the code MarinMoon underscore T3J to save 15%. You can rent and play all the decks you want on Magic Online. It is what I personally use and how I film the videos for YouTube. And if you want to pick up some Magic cards, consider picking them up through our deck list link down below. That's our TCGplayer.com link and anything you purchase through that link really helps out the channel. And special thanks to all of our supporters over on Patreon. And of course, if you want to come out and check out the Twitch stream, the link's down below. The Twitter's there as well. We stream Magic the Gathering gameplay on Mondays starting at 5 p.m. Pacific time, give or take. Um, and we stream for like a good six hours. Come out if you want to see the games live before they go up on YouTube or if you just want to play against me. I welcome that as well. All right, guys, catch you in the next video. Peace out. Thank you so much to our supporters over on Patreon for making this channel possible. Patreon is a platform where you can financially support the content creators you love. And if you would like to go the extra mile and help monetize these MTG video creations so I can keep doing this kind of content, the Patreon link is down below in the description. But if you would like to support the channel for free, hitting that like and subscribe button down below is well enough for me. And a quick special thanks to our top tier supporter this month, The Real Shroom. And that's about it guys, thank you so much for watching the video and I'll catch you in the next one.